We continue our series on the future of the digital living room. Some people have been dumping traditional televisions for something more spicy, 3D TVs. But our next guest argues they might be a waste of your cash. There's possibly too much hype. John Abel's the New York bureau chief for Wired.com, and he's joining us from New York to give us his take on the digital living room. So, John, a few of our guests this week have been big fans of 3D TV. You, not so much. How come? Yeah. Well, I just don't see how it's anything other than a niche uh, item. I, I honestly don't see, even if we get past the sort of weird glasses thing, uh, that there will be much <laughs> that you want to see. I mean, do you want to see I Love Lucy in 3D or something like that? Uh, sports, no. yes. Sp sports, yes. Uh, in sports venues, large screen venues, the World Cup, that kind of thing. But it's a very sort of narrow kind of uh, uh, technology. So I don't see it being a very popular consumer item. In the defense of the companies that are spending a lot of money to make TV 3D, if you've seen some of the cable shows where they show you some of the sporting events or some of the mm -hmm. uh, specialty programming in 3D, it is pretty impressive. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it can be a compelling experience in the same way that IMAX is a compelling experience, but we're not going to have IMAX in the living room uh, in, in the near or distant future. I don't think. It's, it's something which is good for some things, but television needs to be good for lots of things, for everything, and, and it, 3D is just not it. Well, you raise a good point. We've talked so much about what's happening at the box office that some movies have been 3D hits and then others not so much, right? Yeah, well, Roger Ebert, the Chicago uh, film critic, says 3D is a waste of a good dimension. And he's probably right. <laughs> I mean, there was a lot of hope that um, content creators put in the success of Avatar. Um, Avatar was successful because it was a, a good movie. It hit all the right chords. It had the right kind of story. And it had the sort of condiment of also 3D. I think if you take away from that that people are hot for 3D, you'd be wrong. And I think the fact that 3D has been pimped uh, for two years now at CES as the next great thing uh, to crickets uh, is proof of uh, otherwise. So if 3D TV is not going to be something we're all doing five years from now, what will be something we're doing five years from now when we want to sit in front of the TV? Well, uh, the, the living room has always had a, a single focal point. Uh, it used to be the big, uh, the big radio console, uh, the fireplace before that. Um, we're going to see screens get bigger, uh, uh, projection style screens so that you don't have the sort of LCD uh, problem. Uh, with a projector, you're, the only limitation you have is the, is the length of your room. And you're going to see a second and third screen, perhaps, uh, tablets and smartphones that are controlling things and allow you to engage in what's going on um, in the broadcast or the stream, as the case may be, uh, as a peripheral to, to that activity. That we will definitely see. And what about gaming? I mean, instead of having you know, your, your game box and your TV, How's gaming going to change over the next couple of years? Uh, probably for the next few years, uh, gaming consoles will continue to be a separate item. Uh, although the living room's getting crowded. We have the set-top wars. You've got TiVo, that, TiVo that's sort of fighting with your cable or satellite company for dominance as a set-top. Then you might have a Roku or an Apple TV. Then you've got to have an Xbox or a PlayStation. The thing about uh, gaming consoles is that they do gaming so well, it'll take a long time before people that absolutely love that, to the exclusion of all else, will be satisfied right. with a PC kind of version of that. So I don't think there's any death in the living room for the uh, gaming console, but we will sort of reduce the number of boxes. They will be combined in ways that you've seen, you know, a smartphone now does a million things where it used to be right. you had to carry this, that, and the other thing. John, very quickly, HP did some dramatic stuff today in part because they are chasing Apple. Uh, how big a role does Apple play in how the digital living room looks? Well, look, you know, I, I, people that write about Apple have been accused of hyping Apple's uh, success uh, a lot. But th the fact is, it's inescapable now that the iPad has not only changed the world in sort of important cultural ways, but has really altered the landscape of what computing is. Um, you don't even have credible, many credible uh, entrants in the tablet sphere. And whether or not PCs are going to be killed by them, they're certainly going to be dented. Uh, it's, it's a way of the future. I, Apple's invented it, uh, or it's reinvented it, as they often do. And it's going to be quite a ride for them for a long time, I think. All right, John, thanks for sharing your perspectives with us. John Abel of Wired.com joining us for our series on the digital living room.